I'm Shanti Feldhahn. Thanks for joining me for this series about understanding the secret inner lives of men. This is a very fun topic, and after more than 10 years of research, which I'll explain in a moment, I've also realized it is a very, very important one. This affects every one of us as women. The most intense application is in marriage, but this is important for anyone who is dating or wants to be dating, or maybe you are single again and kind of looking back to learn what happened. Maybe you work with men, or how many of us have sons? See, it affects all of us. Men are everywhere. Now, let's talk for a moment about how we're gonna cover this subject. First, in this series, we will have six sessions on understanding several key truths about men that affect us every day, but which we may not know. We will be focusing here on the romantic relationship applications, but you'll probably see how it applies in other areas. It's also important to say that we will be addressing this from a faith-based perspective and looking at what the Bible has to say from time to time. I know not everyone will have the same belief system, but I think it is so important to go to God with everything in our lives, including our relationships. Although the research is rigorous across the board and it applies to everyone, in this study we'll be addressing these topics from a Christian perspective. And finally, in this series, we'll be very one-sided. We as women have our own needs and want men to understand us too, but that is a different book and a different series called For Men Only. It is so important for each of us to be willing to learn and to do whatever we can do, regardless of what he does. Here is why it is so important to understand how men are wired. From the time that we were small, most of us have built up these ideas and assumptions about how men think, and we don't realize that some of them are wrong. And on top of those assumptions, we've built all these habits in how we interact. So we care about him, but we don't realize that sometimes what we're doing to show it isn't impacting him in the way we think it is. And even worse, we may not realize that sometimes we're actually hurting him in ways we never wanted to. So before we go any further, I have an important question. If it is true that we may have some ideas in our minds about men that are wrong, are you willing today to give God permission to open your eyes to those things? Even more important, are you willing to give God permission to change your minds if there are any areas that need to be changed? I'm going to stop for just a second and I'm going to pray. And if you are willing to allow God to open your eyes and change your mind, pray silently along with me. Lord, thank you for the women who are gathered here to understand men. Right now, we ask you, open our eyes to things that we just may not have seen before. Lord, here are our minds. We say, please change our minds if there are any areas that need to be changed. And I am so grateful, Lord, that you are so good at opening blind eyes. And we ask you to do that for us throughout this study. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. The amazing thing is, ladies, is that once our eyes are opened, it is life-changing. We can know what our man is actually thinking and feeling, avoid hurting him without realizing it, and love him in the way he needs to be loved. Let me start by telling the story of how I got here, because originally I just stumbled over this stuff. I'm an analyst by training. I have a graduate degree that's very analytical. I started out working on Wall Street, and when my husband Jeff and I moved from New York City to Atlanta, I had the opportunity to write a couple of novels. And one of my main characters in this novel was a man. He was a good, decent husband and father and a successful businessman. That's the way I painted this main male character. And as a woman, you really realize how little you know about how men actually think when you have to write their thoughts. I couldn't just say what this male character was doing. I had to say what he was thinking. How do I know what a guy would be thinking in some pretty personal situations? And so initially, this whole thing started just because I started interviewing a few men. I'd ask Jeff or we'd be out to dinner with another couple and I'd say, okay, Here's this scene in this book. 
what would you be thinking if this was you in this situation? And often as these guys started telling me what they'd actually be thinking, I'm going, really? <laughs> That's what you're thinking? And then I realized it wasn't just that it was surprising. What I was hearing was so foundational. This wasn't stuff that these men said that they thought or they felt off in a corner once every three months. These were things the men said that they thought or felt every single day, multiple times a day. And at that point, Jeff and I had been married about eight years and I'm thinking, why have I not heard this before? So then I started digging into it some more and it did become a giant research study. I did the research about men for for women only, and then together, Jeff and I did the research about women for for men only, and then a study for parents about their kids and several for teenagers. So the information that I'll be sharing with you is based on 10 years of research with more than 5,000 men, including four nationally representative surveys. So what you're hearing isn't my opinion. Now that said, I'll also be making generalizations and there are always exceptions. If 75% of men said one way, by definition, 25% didn't. Everyone is an individual. Sometimes a couple will be flipped on certain issues. The key is to understand the man in your life. So let's dive in and start talking about men those things we don't get but that they really wish we knew men maybe play a good game sometimes but uh we're just people and so we have our own self-doubts we have our own uh things about ourselves that maybe we don't like and so there's always instances where a man can put on a good game but really deep down on the inside you know, he knows or he has some doubts uh, of himself of, you know, am I really the best person? Am I really the best man? For the most part, um, I think most men feel um, not so confident. Being a good father is, is, is a little complicated for me because, he, you know, my son, i um, been with him since he's been two. Um, I'm a stepfather, um, so um, my dad wasn't around for me. But it's it's challenging because didn't have that guidance. Am I doing right? Am I doing wrong? So I kind of have to go by how he's, what he feels, what he says, how he reacts to me. I, I will tell you that it's okay for a woman to be strong. And most strong men will appreciate that. The misconception I've found is that most women assume that all men or most men are strong because they're physically strong and they're meant to be the head of the home and lead and all the macho things. However, on the inside, a lot of men, well, most men have self-doubt. We have issues with confidence. Latin culture as being more macho, machismo, um, I think uh, men in general are raised up that you're not supposed to show your feelings, you know, or act out your feelings. Uh, is it okay to talk about them? Absolutely not. You know, can I cry? No way. So it's hard to open up and, and let that, um, let you feel weak, you know, like, hey, I'm sad. I feel love for you. Does it make me less of a man? And, you know, hopefully not, you know, but again, if it's, it's kind of built into you, like, don't do that. <laughs> You're not supposed to do that. When you get in an argument and then something hurtful is said, I would say my first reaction is get angry. But really, angry is just sadness turned inside out. I mean, it, it is um, because I'm so vulnerable to this woman that I love so much that, you know, it's just like I want to be able to tell, say to her, you can't say those things to me because really you're breaking my heart. I need your support, I need your affirmation, I need your respect, because that's really what, um, you know, what kind of gets me going every day. For the rest of this session, we're going to cover an important topic that sets the stage for everything else. It turns out there is a great difference between how men look on the outside and how they feel about themselves on the inside. Men look so confident in themselves. In fact, we think he looks a little too confident in himself. He could be taken down a peg or two. But on the inside, men have so much self-doubt and a vulnerability that we don't even know is there. The way the men described it to me, they feel like, 
I want to tackle a challenge. I want to do great things. I want to be a good husband, a good father, a good worker or whatever, but I'm really not sure I know exactly what I'm doing and I hope nobody finds out. Essentially, that self-doubt is a bit like a raw nerve and it's painful and we can hit that nerve without having any idea that that's what we're doing. As I talk to so many men, here's what this insecurity feels like in the heart of every man. Do I measure up? Do I have any idea what I'm doing as a husband? Am I any good as a, a provider or a father? And they are looking to the most important woman in their life for the answer to that question. And this applies even to the most seemingly successful, confident men. I interview men everywhere I go. Heaven help, the poor man stuck next to me on the airplane for two hours. And I heard this from the vast majority of them and saw it on all the surveys. Just a couple of weeks ago, the man sitting next to me on the airplane was the CEO of this huge, very successful company. Under his leadership, this company has won so many awards for how well they treat their employees. It's one of the reasons the company is so successful. But as we got talking about these subjects, guess what he said? He said, I am always thinking someone is going to find me out, that I'm an imposter. Someone who can see what I'm really able to do is going to come into my big executive office and say, you don't belong here. You don't have any idea what you're doing. He was this incredibly successful man, and he said this was always in the back of his mind. And he also pointed out what many men told me, which is that this self-doubt is not just at work. So many men said that they just want to know how to make their wives happy. But as one man put it, we want to be a good husband. We want to be a great dad, but we may not have had a great role model. And there's no guidebook. So we just try to fake it. And we are desperately hoping we can make our wife happy and that she thinks we're doing a good job, which is why we can be so sensitive when we think she's saying we're not doing a good job. As I talked to these men, I realized that we women don't see how often we hit that raw nerve and send the signal that a man finds most painful of all. No, you don't measure up. And as a matter of fact, I think you're inadequate. That is just something that kills a man and it runs under the surface in many topics we will cover in this series together. So what is it that hits that raw nerve? This is something that we do a lot without realizing it, and we can be so confused why he's upset. Here's one overall rule. Often, it's not just what we say, but how we say it that matters. One man told me, okay, I'm gonna give you a rule. This is from me to the women of America. And I said, okay, go for it, buddy. He said, anytime a woman starts a sentence with, why did you dot, dot, dot? Why did you make that decision? Like, why did you take the kids out so late at night? The man said, in the man's mind, on the end of that sentence, just add a comma, you dodo. Why did you do that, you dodo? When this guy told me this, I said, but that's not what we're saying. And he said, yeah, but that's what we're hearing. And I said, okay, you're going to have to help me on this because what do we say instead? If I need to ask why, I need to ask why. What do I say? And he looked at me as if the answer should be so obvious, like I had two heads or something. And he said, how different would it be if you said, I know you must have had a reason for that. Can you help me understand what it is? Same question, but it assumes you had a reason. I'm not there yet. Help me understand. And again, it matters because inside he's questioning, do I have any idea what I'm doing? And if so, instead of hearing a question to him, it's an accusation like you were inadequate. You took the kids out late. You're a failure as a father. He's hearing a message that you would never want to send. Now, some of you may be thinking the same thing I was the first dozen times I heard this, which is, oh please, that is so silly. It shouldn't bother him. And what I realized eventually is that I was thinking that because it wouldn't bother me. But he's not me. He is wired very differently by a God who knew what he was doing. And this message that I am sending him has these huge consequences way beyond what I would have ever thought. In fact, some women have been confused why their husband would say, I feel like nothing I do is ever good enough for you. We're like, what? 
but that is a red flashing warning light. It's signaling that something you're doing is making him feel that you think he's inadequate. And a man who feels inadequate so often shuts down because he feels like it's not safe to open up and to try. But a man who feels like his wife or his girlfriend believes in him feels like it is totally safe to try to be a good husband, a good father, even if he messes up occasionally. And he'll share more, be more open and vulnerable because he knows that you'll be safe with that tender heart that he has inside. So what do we do to avoid hitting that raw nerve and help him open up instead? In one word, the answer is affirmation. If all this is true, it is not that men have an inflated view of themselves and they kind of need to be brought down to ground level. If this is true, they are starting below ground level and we should be looking for every opportunity to build them up. So learn what sends your man the signal that I think you're inadequate and avoid it. Instead of, why did you keep the kids out so late? Approach it like, I know you knew the kids have an early morning, honey. I'm concerned. I'm confused why you kept them out late. Sure, we'll sometimes disagree, but in those cases, assume he wants to do the right thing, and it's just a difference of opinion. And most important, find ways to affirm and appreciate him. If you think he's a great dad, tell him so. Brag about him to your friends, especially when he's listening. We'll be talking a lot more about how to do that in session two. But just realize this type of affirmation will speak life into him in ways you never could imagine. 